Pistol. Hello, hello, welcome back to Peace Storm. I am Pluvius Lelon, and today we're going to continue Phoenix Wright Justice for All. Now, as as, as you know, if you uh, watched the last episode, we're we're on the we're, we're on the final episode. I don't know why there's no music. What do we do about that? Um, I have a thought. Huh? You're going to represent Mr. On Guard, aren't you? Yeah, but I don't really seem to have a choice. Um, but what if... what if he is the real murderer? What would you do then, Mr. Nick? Would you fight to get a not guilty for a murderer to save Mystic Maya? Pearls. Let's talk to Mr. On Guard first, okay? We can think all the bad things we want, but it doesn't change a thing. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, I, I can't stop thinking about it. Pearls, you're really worried about Maya, aren't you? I, I don't have anyone else left in this world. What do you mean? My family's all gone. Her family? My father? He left my mother at the village behind and went away. I'm sorry. And my mother... She did that thing. All for me. Mystic Maya... She's like a sister to me. She's all I have left in this world. Hmm... All right, off to the detention center, I guess. We couldn't wait for visiting hours to start, so Pearl and I came down here early to visit one Nickel Samurai charged with the murder of the Jammin' Ninja. Good morning. How are you today? I know this situation might be a little tough for you. Um, we're... Oh, sorry, dude. I already signed up. I excuse me? I already have life insurance. I signed up a long time ago because my job is, you know. Oh, no, no, no. We're not insurance salespeople. Really? Dude, I really don't need that right now either. Fire extinguishers. I mean, this building isn't my house, so... No, no, no. We're not here to sell you fire extinguishers either. I'm a lawyer. My name is Phoenix Wright. A lawyer? Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask my manager, okay? The Nickel Samurai sure is a strange person, isn't he? I think strange is an understatement. Sorry about that. You're just in time. Huh? You're a lawyer dude, right? My manager's looking for a good one right now, so how about it? M Mr. Nick, this is our chance. I have to make him let me take his case. I have to. Sorry to intrude, but I'd like to ask you a few, a few personal questions. Um, that's okay, but dude, my autobiography is coming out soon, so... If I say stuff without the publisher's approval, then I'm gonna get beaten real hot water. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask my publisher, okay? Mr. On God's so lucky. He has so many people he can talk to. I know what. Why'd they let him keep his uh, his wrist phone in prison? It's like, don't you only get... Well, okay, I guess he's not in prison, but yeah, what? why'd they let him keep his, uh, his wrist phone in jail? Don't you only get, like, one phone call? Um, I don't know if he actually has anyone he can really talk to. Sorry about that. Like I thought, the publisher said it'd be real bad if I said anything, dude. Does he have a mind of his own? Mr. On Guard, I'd like to ask you about the murder. Are you covering this for a tabloid as a side job, dude? Um, well, if you want my statement on this, you should ask through my staff. No, 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 I'm asking on be I'm not asking on behalf of a tabloid. 
Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask the president of the studio, okay? Is he alright, Mr. Nick? If we're talking about Mr. On Guard's brain here, I wouldn't put my money on it. Sorry about that. The studio president said, Even Neo Mount Fuji itself knows that I'm not the murderer. Um, Mr. Nick, what's Neo Mount Fuji? It's a mountain in the city of Neo Old Tokyo, the city the Nickel Samurai protects. Yeah, I guess I'll just, uh, present everything. Dude, I know I like to throw money around, but it's not like I buy anything and everything. That's nice, because it's not up for sale anyway. Should I, me I meant to present this. Mr. On Guard, this is an attorney's badge. Dude, I'm sorry, but I don't have the free time to be looking at things like that. Huh? I'm much too busy with Nickel Samurai stuff right now. I don't have the time to take a lawyer's correspondence course. Why does he believe I'm a salesman? Insurance, then fire extinguishers, now this. What's that? It's a ticket for the press conference. You were going to give one after winning the Grand Prix, right? Huh? Me? Yes, while you were in costume, no less. Um, I never heard anything like that, dude. I only heard about the stage show. I always leave that kind of stuff to my manager. He didn't know? That's odd. Mr. Nick, what are you going to do with that? I don't know yet, but I figured I could at least show it to him. Is that a transceiver? Hey, it looks real ni like a real nice one, too. I got it as a present from someone. Hmm? Interesting. I've also been instructed to take your case. Is that what you heard from the transceiver? Yes. Dude, that's terrible. Don't let some disembodied voice boss you around. <laughs> this is going for a man with a cell phone on his wrist. Well, dude, I think it's about time for me to get going. Please, wait. I really need to take your case. There's always other people in need of a lawyer, right? Want me to introduce you to a few? Please, please let Mr. Nick represent you. Man, oh man. Lawyers these days. Now you dudes use kids to pull in clients, too? If you don't take me as your lawyer, then the killer is going to... Wait, what did you just say? The killer. The killer? What's he doing? He looks like he's mulling something over. Alright, dude. I accept your terms. Huh? I'll let you represent me in court. We did it! We did it, Mr. Nick! Uh, yeah. I don't feel any better for it, and he doesn't look too happy either. Go ahead, ask me anything. I'll help you out as much as I can. Man, I think my lucky star is that people know my name. Well, you're quite the hero when you're in, you're in the national spotlight. I didn't know who he is. Does that mean I'm not a good citizen? Uh, it's really great to be the Nickel Samurai. Dude, lately I just keep on getting more and more popular. True enough. The Nickel Samurai is very popular among, his high, among high schoolers and secretaries right now. Why secretaries? I guess Mr. On Guard has a way of catching the eyes of women. Do you know my motto? Refreshing like a spring breeze. That's what I am. A spring breeze? That's why this kind of scandal's disastrous, dude. I mean, even if I get out of here tomorrow, it's still gonna look bad. But everyone loves a good scandal. Can you tell me about your activities last night? After I got the award, I took a break and went back to my room. I had that post-ceremony stage show to do. So I was in my Nickel Samurai costume. And you were alone the entire time? My manager was running around being busy, so yeah. Because of the press conference you were supposed to hold after the show? 
I told you, dude. I have no idea about any press conference, all right? That's strange. I thought the Nickel Samurai was gonna conf confess something. Anyway, when I was leaving my room, that's when I noticed it was kinda noisy. Mr. Corda was already dead at that time? Yeah, that's what I gathered anyway from my manager. I'm beginning to gather that this guy can't do a thing on his own. And that's when the detective in the green coat showed up. He searched me, that then, out of the blue, the dude arrested me. About you and the victim, Mr. Juan Corda, what sort of... It's got nothing to do with anything, dude. Man, with that face of his, you can't even tell me he's the same... You can't even tell he's the same age as me. They wanted to try and make a Jam and Ninja movie, even though we all know it'd fail. The Nickel Samurai still won in the end, right? Yeah, I took the Grand Prix by storm. So why would I, the winner, have any reason to kill the guy anyway? Dude, you'd think it'd be the other way around, you know? Um, do you know why you were arrested? I guess maybe my full body search went badly. Did they find something on you? They found a button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. A button? I don't get it either. It was caught in the pleats of my samurai pants, or Hakama. Ah! Dude, I really think someone planted it there, though. I'm serious. Wonder if that's what really happened. I guess this is about all I'm gonna get out of him. Mr. Nick? Yeah? Let's ask one last thing. Let's test Mr. Ongo to see if he really is innocent or not. We can do that? Yes. If you use this... Maya's Magatama... He won't be able to hide any secrets from you, Mr. Nick. I'm sure of it. I get it. Mr. On Guard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Please answer me honestly. What is it, dude? Did you kill Mr. Juan Corda? Please put the phone away and answer the question yourself. Alright. Just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Corda, okay? Well, Mr. Nick? Nothing. Not a chain or lock in sight. Which means, it's alright to trust him. Yeah, it does appear that way. Well, at least I can breathe a sigh of relief knowing my client's innocent. Um, the trial's tomorrow, right? I'm counting on you, dude. Well, shit. Oh, okay. I thought the trial was going to begin immediately, and I was like, what the fuck? I have no evidence. Well, at least we were able to get Mr. Matt on guard as our client. Now we know he didn't do it, which is very important. So, so now what should we do? Well, the trial's tomorrow, and we only get this one chance. There's only one way to prove Mr. On guard's innocence. We have to find the real killer. Okay, then let's start looking. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You can't come in without... Good morning. Hold on, it's you. What's going on around here? Um... I heard poor Juan was killed, is that true? It's a bad rerun, is what it is. Another Steel Samurai doing the most evil of deeds. Um, you know, that's not entirely... I'll have you know that I was a huge fan of Wands. Why, oh why, do all the stars I'm interested in drop one, lo but one by one like flies? It's always been that way. Ever <laughs> um, actually, I wanted to ask you about the murder and what happened. Hm, don't push me, boy. Um, Mr. Nick? Uh, I, um... I couldn't hear everything she said because she was talking too fast. 
Miss Oldbag, could you please speak a little slower? Don't boss me around, you spiky-haired smarty pants! My dear Hammer died a year ago in that dreadful murder. And only recently did I finally find a star that makes my heart go ba-dump again. I don't know what to say. I ask you, why does every star I cheer for always end up kicking the bucket? Um... I'd watch your words. No one's going to get away with anything bad with saying anything bad about my wan. I haven't said anything. Well, I don't believe a word that woman says anyway. Huh? What woman? That irritating backwater girl with the afro and the horrible country accent. I mean, what is that manner of speaking supposed to be? And why does she never stop? Honestly, women these days, they don't know the meaning of the word modesty. Pearls, are you thirsty? Um, a little. Okay, I'll go get you some juice or something. Thank you very much. Hey, are you paying attention, young'uns today? So, I'm guessing Miss Oldbag heard everything from Lana. I want to ask you about what happened around the time of the murder. I don't know anything about that. I was here getting ready. Getting ready? For what? The show, of course. Well, and the press conference afterwards. Cue mysterious music for the magical press conference. Anyway, I don't know anything about the murder. I see. But... But if you're talking about what I saw, that's different. I saw it very clearly. What? I saw the most important moment of the night. The most important moment? You don't mean... Oh, so now you treat me with respect, you disrespectful child. When you speak to your elders, you should always be polite. Really, kids today. Please tell me, what did you see? Jesus, that's a lot of psyche locks. The murder last night was gruesome, wasn't it? But then what murder isn't? Please don't stray into another tangent, please. If you want to hear more, then show your respect and bring this lady a present. Well, I highly doubt I have the evidence I need for that right now, so let's uh, go investigating. Looks like the investigation is still in full swing. The hotel staff and the police are running around like a bunch of headless chickens. I wonder if we can do any investigating of our own in this kind of atmosphere. Well, gotta roll up the sleeves and try, I guess. Lobster. We ate at this table just last night, didn't we? Yes. I was really happy then. I wish I could make you smile again. Even for a second. This sure is one luxurious hotel. Almost to the point of gaudy with how, how it blends... It. Blends together everything fancy imaginable. Speaking of fancy, didn't that bellboy give me something like that last year? They haven't cleaned up all the food yet. There's a sad feeling hanging in the air now that the party's over. The award ceremony was held on that stage just last night. It was really fabulous. You just reminded me of the circus for a second. Wonder if everyone's all right. I heard that Barry Big Circus just recently started holding performances again. I'm sure they'll all be fine, Pearls. There's a grand set of doors over there. It's the doors Maya followed the bellboy out of, only to disappear. If only we'd all gone together. It's such a beautiful sight. The chandelier? Yes. But I can't believe it. I can't believe that such a terrible murder happened under all such beautiful lights. It's shocking. Hmm. 
Guess there's uh, nothing in here. Hey, you're here! Been waiting for you, Mr. Lawyer. Lotta. Hey, Mr. Copfella, the thief showed his face. What? Arrest him, put him on trial, find him guilty, give him the death penalty. What's wrong, Lotta? Are you feeling all right? Look here and there and up and down the mountain, but it ain't here. So why don't you just hurry up and give it back to me, you creep? Um, what are you looking for? My camera. C-A-M-E-R-A. -E it's my lifeblood. I'm gonna die without my $700 camera. Your camera? Look, don't lots of people say the criminal always goes back to the scene of the crime? And looky looky, here we are. Yep, here I am, faced with a lot of trouble. Huh? So you lost your camera? Ain't no ordinary camera. You buy it in a store and it's $1,600 brand new. Huh? But didn't you just say you bought it for $700? I had a nice long talk with the guy at the store, about five hours, I reckon. I made this itty-bitty scratch on it, and the manager got all huffed up in the face. He gave me what he was talking to, and was real mean about it, too. He done made me cry at that. When did you lose your camera? Last night, after the murder happened. It must have been when I was busy look running around looking into things. That's why I lost sight of my dear, darling, expensive sweetie. Lotta, what did you capture with that expensive camera of yours? I don't rightly know. I snapped a shot of anything that caught my eye. So I don't remember. Besides, I couldn't get anything from my big scoop. wonder if Lotta's missing camera is even connected to the murder. Lotta, please tell me what you know about that what happened at the time of the murder. Well, from before the ceremony last night, I was hanging around here in this area. Yeah, actually, I was here around the time Mr. On Guard was arrested. What were you doing here? You sure you went to school, city boy? Wherever Lot of Heart goes, there's a story to be found. A big scoop to be had. A big scoop? I told you before, I'm gonna be the best tabloid photographer the world's ever seen. Reckon course that means I'm always looking for the perfect shot. Wonder what scoop she was after this time. Although, I was also on the lookout for the other stars that were here. So, maybe I wasn't here the entire time. Lotta, are you sure you weren't here the entire time? So you could take a picture of your big s for your big scoop? Well, maybe I was. That's what a real that's what real journalists do. Got some juicy inside info, so I thought to myself, why not get a picture for proof? What kind of story was it that you would hang around here? <sighs> Fuck. Oops, sorry, Mr. Lawyer. Can't be telling you that. Trade secret, you know? Not again. Why does everyone have something to hide? We've been stopped, haven't we? Haha, <laughs> yeah. Take that, Mr. Lawyer. I'm glad someone around here is happy. Miss Lotta and your eye roll smile. Oh, we can look inside the, the hotel rooms now. Um, where are we? We're in Mr. Matt on guard's dressing room. This is our client's room. Uh, may, may I help you with something? Um, uh, we're... You're Mr. On Guard's lawyer, correct? I gathered as much. I also looked I also looked for lawyers on my end, but to no avail. Um how'd you know I'm his lawyer? You were just saying that he is your client. In a situation like this, the only person who would use such a word would be his lawyer. Wow. It's a simple deduction, really. The trial's tomorrow and Mr. On Guard's situation's looking rather grim. So you came here, one stop in your mad dash, to find clues to build his case, correct? Well, you're not totally right, but you're not totally off, either. 
It's really not the time to be showing off, Mr. Nick. I'm Adrian Andrews. I hate to waste time, so let's get down to business. Uh, all right. She may be of small stature, but appearances can be deceiving. I assume the first thing you need to know is what everyone was doing that night, correct? Y yes, that's correct. Then I'll tell you. Before the awards ceremony, I had dinner with Mr. On Guard. In this very room, I might add. Dinner? What'd you eat? I told you, I hate to waste time with trifling details. If you took a look at the table yourself, you wouldn't need to ask me. I bet she's a lot of fun at parties. When the award show was starting, I headed for Viola Hall. And after the show ended, you came back to this room? No. I had some small errands to run. I helped with the preparations in the lobby. Oh. Preparations for the post-ceremony show, I guess. When it was time for the post-ceremony show, I came back to call for Mr. On Guard. After that, I went to visit Mr. Corrida. And that's when you found his body, isn't it? You really had held strong through everything. Yeah, she does seem to be mentally tough as nails. Um, so about you and... Stop right there. You aren't seriously about to ask how Mr. On Guard and I are related, are you? Sorry. I have no idea how he chose... How he could cho... How he could chose you as... What? <laughs> okay. Why did she have to go and say something like that? Mr. Nick, calm down... Calm down and hang in there. I'll give you a shoulder rub to relieve you of stress later, alright? I already gave you my name earlier, but I'll add that I'm Mr. On Guard's manager. His manager? Speaking of managers, did the victim, Mr. Corda, have one? No, he did not. He didn't? Global Studios has a very different policy from Worldwide Studios in that Worldwide Studios does not assign individual managers to their stars. I see. This industry is very ruthless and unforgiving. Actually, you you look quite ruthless and unforgiving yourself to your poor partner. Dragging a little girl like this to places... Dra dragging a little girl like her to places like this? Honestly. You're wrong. Uh, I'm doing this to help Mystic Maya. Pearls, calm down and hang in there. I'll buy you a juice later, alright? Mm. Let's see... Yeah, I guess just present everything. Um, I'd like to ask you about this. I told you, I hate trifling matters. It's a waste of time to show me things that are of no relevance to me. Wow, this is the first time we've been I've been shut down this badly. You were the one taking care of the arrangements for this press conference, right? Yes, that's right. But Mr. On Guard said he didn't know about it. Is that what he said? Huh? Actually, I don't know all the details either. It was a request from the publicity department. All I did was help out and do what I was asked. Oh, I see. Well, I wonder about that. I wouldn't take her to be the type of person to do something without knowing the details. Uh, yeah, it's start examining stuff, I guess. Looks like dishes left over from dinner. A dinner for two at that. I'm sure that Mr. Ron Gold and Miss, Miss Andrews plates. Looks like they had T-bone steaks. What's with Global Studios and T-bone steaks? Some samurai-looking clothes on the sofa there. Um, I think that jacket-looking thing is called a happy. Whatever it is, I'm sure something like that would make a great souvenir. Maya would be absolutely thrilled. It's probably Mr. On Guard's suitcase. For someone who is only going to be here for the rewards show, there's a lot of stuff. Looks like he has about three days' worth of clothes in here. Stalls really all different from us, aren't they? 
That's the bedroom over there. That's a bed? Wow, they have really big beds here. I think that's about everything. Let's check out uh, Mr. Corda's room now. Holy shit. Mr. Dick, where are we? We're in Mr. Juan Corda's room, Pearls. Mr. Corda? The victim. Which makes this the crime scene, too. Oh, it's you! So, what's happened? The kidnapper. Has he contacted you again? Not yet. He probably won't until we win Mr. On Guard's acquittal. Um, you doing okay, pal? Hanging in there? I just want Maya to be alright. We don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna help you out as much as I can, pal. You can do that? Even if, even if we want to look around the crime scene? Just this once. Special circumstances, all right, pal? I'll even tell you everything I know, but you gotta keep quiet. It's my neck on the line here. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I got you guys a map of the hotel, pal. Here you go, little missy. Wow, you're giving it to me? Thank you. Haha, <laughs> wouldn't want you to get lost in a hotel too big for its own good. Mr. Nick, I'll go a map. That's great, Pearls. Um, but Mr. Nick, I can't read what it says. Do you know what was the cause of death? Well, technically, the final autopsy report isn't out yet, but... One look at the victim should tell you, pal. It should? Yeah, here's a picture. There's a knife in his chest. Yeah, pal, that's the murder weapon. So he was stabbed to death. They're looking at the fingerprints down at the lab right now. There were fingerprints on the knife? Yep. It looks like they're... It looks like they're pretty sure they're Mr. On Guard's prints, pal. That's bad. Real bad. Why was Mr. On Guard arrested? Because we had evidence on him. Evidence? Looks like the victim, Juan Corridor, really put up a big fight. Yeah, one look at the crime scene and you can tell. There's signs of a struggle everywhere. Well, yeah. During the fight, his button came off. Mr. On Guard said something about a button. Something like one of the Jamma Ninja's buttons got caught in his Hakama. That's not all. What? There was a witness, pal. A witness? Who is it? That lady, Miss Oldbag. Please, anyone but her. The prosecution has plenty of evidence to make a solid case. Not to mention there's something around where the, the Vic... There's something around where the Vic was that's a little off. Something that's a little off? As in... As in, that's for you to figure out, pal. All right, let's try and figure it out, Mr. Nick. No, 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 not yet. Jesus, that's a lot of teddy bears. Wow, there are a lot of bears. Alarm clock ones, collector's editions, stuffed teddies, plastic models. It's pretty overwhelming. Is there kind of, is there a kind of bear he doesn't have? It's even a few in the trash can. Yeah, I get the feeling the guy didn't really like bears. Poor teddies. It's hard to bear with all these problems. <laughs> I don't think I want to bear the trauma the last case caused me. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? so messy here. Pearls really likes things neat and tidy, I take it. There are a lot of electronic things in here that I've never seen before. Hey, Mr. Nick, tell me what they are, pretty please. 
Okay, that over there is a watch. You wear it on your wrist. I know what a watch is. Oops. For a second there, I forgot I was talking with pearls, not Maya. <laughs> it's a suitcase. There's so many things in it that I bet it barely closes. This is clothes, a dryer, an electric shaver, a calculator. Do all stores pack this too much stuff like Mr. Corrida? Looks like Mr. Corrida had dinner last night. This bottle is tomato juice. We had a lot of food at the award show last night, but I wonder if the stars had gone on stage only after eating only after only eating a meager meal like this. Bottles of cosmetics are scattered all over the floor. This is probably where Mr. Corda fought his assailant. What are these bits of glass from? Flower vase, maybe? There are flowers on the floor, but I don't know what they are. You don't know much about flowers, do you, Mr. Nick? This is a guitar case, I guess. It's a little beat up, but it's still usable. That's strange. The guitar's not here. Maybe he forgot to bring it to the show? But Mystic Maya... She said the bright red guitar was the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. That's true. Huh? This guitar case is wet. But it's only wet on top of the lid. Yeah. There's no water inside the case. This is water, isn't it? It's a beautiful wine glass, and there's tomato juice in it. Ew, tomato juice. I don't really like it that much. There's a bottle of it on the table over there. That's probably where this came from. But doesn't it seem weird? What seems weird? I mean, everything else is scattered all over the floor. She's right. The flower vase is broken and the makeup is strewn everywhere. Why is this glass the only thing that's still alright? Let's see... So that's a bed, right? Yep. It's big, but it's a bed. Oh, Nick! Oh, Mr. Nick, it's so soft! Big beds must be a rarity for her. Right, time to start presenting stuff, I guess. What do you know about this? Um, there's nothing special that I can tell you about this, pal. Look, pal, we don't have a lot of time, so why don't you show me something more important? Miss Von Karma saw me here like this. We have to switch sides real fast. That's your present from the kidnapper, huh? Where you were talking, it sends and receives. Or while you're talking, it sends and receives radio waves. If we could trace that. Yeah, we could use it to find out where the bad guy is. It uses radio waves, huh? I got it. I'll go find a radio scanner and let you borrow it, pal. You look at this photo and you can't help it. Makes you want to say, I can't believe this is the scene of a murder. Stabbed with a knife after a struggle. A clue is sleeping in this photo somewhere. I know it. What can you tell me about this guitar case? Oh, that. This is just what I heard, pal, but the Jammin' Ninja- but, it's the, but that's the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. The guitar case? No, not that. What do you take me as? I mean inside the guitar, of I- I mean the guitar inside, of course. But the guitar's missing. Yeah, we looked for it too. It's not normal for a person to forget to bring their most famous item to an award show. It's starting to sound like that red guitar is related to this case, after all. So, about this wine glass. Ah, so you noticed it, pal. 
The whole crime scene was a mess, but this glass was the only thing that was untouched. You noticed that too, Detective Gumshoe? No, actually, Miss Von Karma noticed it first. Yeah, Pearl's noticed it before me too. Hey, wait a minute. So, does that mean Miss Von Karma's here at the hotel? Yeah, she's around. Man, you're gonna be in so much trouble, pal. Especially if she catches you in here. Well, you can bet the instant I see her, I'll be running with a, a thousand meter dash. What's that beeping noise, Mr. Nick? Hmm, I've heard the sound somewhere before. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? For some reason, whenever I hear that sound, she pops out of nowhere and whips me. Come to think of it, that's exactly what happened last time. Sorry, I gotta make myself scarce. Later, pal. Ow! At last, you reveal your true nature, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Would it be too much to ask you to be nice for a change? So you're the type to steal information from pitifully hopeless detectives. That's very dishonorable of you. Ow. Hey, don't you dare run away, Mr. Scruffy Trenchcoat. Ah. I didn't think the detectives of this country would be this pitiful. Ah! Detective, come over here for a second. Rip. Hmm. I feel better knowing that at least you are man enough to face your punishment. He was so scared he just froze up on the spot. Mr. Phoenix Wright! You. You have soiled my perfect prosecution record. I'll never forget that. This time, victory is mine. Victory is yours? Is that all this means to you? What? Hmm. Come, Scruffy. The investigation briefing is about to begin. Yes, sir. This isn't over yet. I swear on my family's honor. Now, where'd she throw me now? What is this? Well, I guess this means I gotta get back to the precinct now, pal. If you ever need me, come down to the criminal affairs department, alright? And if you can, try not to let Miss Von Karma see you. Well, think I got everything I can get now. Oh, Mr. Wright, how are you? Yeah, Mr. Powers. You been here this entire time? Yeah. People connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show? Okay. The Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed toward kids. It's the sequel to The Steel Samurai. I see. This time there are three Samurai brothers. Aluminum Samurai, Tin Samurai, and of course the Nickel Samurai. It's a love why in Neo-Old Tokyo. I see. Wait. A love what? A love why. This girl Sayo works at the tea shop and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh. I guess the Y shape is like the three brothers colliding over this one girl. Anyway, Sayo is actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation, like Romeo and Juliet times three. Yeah. Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Um. Yes, Pearl? What happens next? I want to know. Miss Sayo. Does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does, doesn't she? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. I'm going to stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theater starting this week. I can't believe she's really considering it. So what's the Jam and Ninja TV show like? 
stirred from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. The Jamma Ninja, like the samurai shows, is geared toward kids. It's the story of a ninja who can't scale a wall, but became a big pop star anyway. I like the little tanuki over there. Uh, what? He was a really lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy, could he sing. With his trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took the ancient world by storm. A, a ninja with a bright red guitar? And then the final fight in front of his beloved Princess Masola. Jammin' versus the Muromachi Five. Suddenly, our brave hero catches a not so jammin' cold the night before Battle Three. Nah, that's too bad for him. Yeah, but this kind of pop music based love story is really. is something high school girls really like. Um, yes, Pearl? What happens next? I want to know. Jammin', the, the Jammin' Ninja. Will he be able to sing? What about Princess Misola? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, which show should I watch? Hmm. Can't believe she's really considering it. Alright, I got gotcha you now. Alright, I'll be honest with you for now. Then please, tell us what you saw. But, ah, uh, what a waste. And here I have a perfectly good chance to have a little fun at you young'un's expense. I am a little devil, after all. Um, doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? Alright, I'll, I'll give you what you want. What the hell? Oh, did, did I have to, like, pick it up when it was thrown at me? Oh, right there. Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? It's called an autograph. Autograph? The paper's got Mr. Corda's name written on it, so it's his autograph. I can't read it at all. <laughs> to be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. I mean, I can't read it either, so... <laughs> ah, it's a special way of writing called cursive. Look here, see how it says, To my dearest Wendy, in more, in more normal letters here? This sloppy, unreadable writing, it's crazy and cruel to give this to someone. Hold on. Wendy. I've heard that name somewhere before. Okay, now we can we can go back. That's that's Juan's autograph. Yes, it is. And, and it even says to my dearest Wendy on it. That's me, right? Right? Um, my name's Wendy Oldbag, so that Wendy has to be me, right? Well, it may say Wendy, but somehow I don't think Juan had this Wendy in mind when he signed it. No, please, give it to me. Let me have it, please. Uh, uh-uh. I can't just let you have it just like that. Yes, yes, I know. Then how about an exchange? Oh, Jesus! Wow, she must really want this autograph. My offer isn't good enough for you? Fine, Mr. Wright, you win. Wendy Oldbag, ready to open up her heart. All for my dearest Juan. Wow, so that was all it took. I feel bad for you now. Huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding. Oh, no. It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. 
It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And... did you tell that to the, to the police? Well, of course. I thought I could get a gift certificate or two out of it, maybe more. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for that part of the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow. This time you're gonna get it. I'm gonna work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. But Mr. Own Gold hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know he did my poor dear Juan in. I just do. That yellow-bellied chicken. A yellow-bellied chicken? I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did it. What did Mr. On Guard ever do to deserve this? What did Mr. On Guard do to you to make you so... You don't know? That guy, he framed my Juan. He created that scandal that plagued poor Juan. Mr. Nick. What is it? What's a scandal? Oh, um, I'll tell you about it after we get home, okay? Poor one, led astray by the by the wiles of that vile temptress. Mr. Nick, what do vials and wild temptress mean? I, um, how about we just listen to what Miss Oldbag has to say for now, okay, Pearls? So, Miss Oldbag, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy, he shoved the girl into Juan on purpose. His own manager? But why? I thought the lawyers were smart. It was to create a scandal to make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. Why do you know about that anyway, Miss Oldbag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. On Guard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Ugh, of course. A tabloid. Next week... Doesn't that mean it... Or, next week... Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Oldbag have information like that? And where'd she get it? <laughs> Lotta, will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I? For my scoop. What I want to know... What I want to know are the details of this scoop. That's not something I can tell you. I mean... That there's my bread and butter. All right, then. An unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. I'm going to say we're looking into a scandal. Mm. Could it be that you, Lotta Hart, were looking for a break with a huge story? Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Juan Corda and this person. This woman. She's Adrian Andrews, Matt on guard's manager. Hmm. The Nickel Samurai's manager caught secretly meeting with his rival, the Jammin' Ninja. It would be the uh, it would be the hottest story of the season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. But you can't just make up any old thing and think it'll make the papers. You gotta have backup. Backup. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have that. What's it, new sauce? Um, you mean news source? That's it. So show me something that shows that Juan guy had... So show me something that shows that Juan guy had something with Miss Andrews.
Hey, that's Miss A- <clears throat> Hey, that's Miss Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I, I was interested in her for, for a little bit. Just, just a little. Hmm. So Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. What do you know about Miss Andrews? Well, see, here's the thing. I don't really know her, know her, you know? There's sort of a small rumor going around her right now. A rumor? Uh, if you're interested, I'd be glad to share what I know. He's so happy it looks like a lion just found his next meal. Would you mind telling me about this gossip? Ah, uh, so you are interested in it. I figured you would be. Yeah. I have such a weakness for celebrity gossip, too. Uh, oh, really? You too, huh? Yeah, so take a look at this. Looks like a tabloid Miss Oldbag would read. Alright, let's see here. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss AA. You see now, don't you? What? You can't stop you can stop pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Corda didn't have a manager of his own. Which means if we're talking about a certain manager with the initials AA. Adrian Andrews. Yes, exactly. This is big news. But it seems kind of odd. That woman, Miss Andrews, together with the biggest rival of her client? That's uh, that wonderful thing that can only happen between two people. Mr. Powers looks so happy. Pearls is just following along, not having any idea as to why she's smiling. <laughs> well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. And, uh, hup. Boop. This is the article from a certain weekly tabloid. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss AA. Ah! Mr. Corda didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Miss Mr. On Guard's manager, Adrian Andrews, she has the initials AA. You saw this article and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were lurking around Mr. Corridor's door last night. Ah! You were looking into Mr. Corda and Miss Andrew's affair, weren't you? You got it. I was gonna get myself a scoop by catching him in a secret meeting. But there's already an article about it in one of the weekly tabloid magazines. It's no longer breaking news. What'd you just say? Her initials are AA. That's kind of a vague thing, isn't it? That ain't no proof of nothing. People are gonna want to see real proof. Well, at least I do. That's what I was doing, getting photos. Oh. I'm gonna whip up the reader's interest with some gossip and a little misleading. And spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Wow, Lotta. Nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished up writing my spicy article, you know. But... The paper I wrote it on, my note to myself, it's gone. You note to yourself? It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. They done run off together. Came here for my big story. Didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Yeah, I understand. It's enough to make a gal go bonkers, I tell ya. What's with people now, anyway? I never thought I'd see the day when someone done steal something from me. You really want that note back, huh? Got no idea why, though. St story on that note's probably a bold-faced lie. Here we go. Detective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Hey, so you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? 
Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but, we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. So what do you mean the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. It's two. And both of them are in this photo. The first is the button that's missing from the victim's chest. Hmm. That's the button you found during your body search of Mr. On Guard. Yep, found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai Special Pants. Um, uh, and the second one is... The knife in his chest, pal. The fingerprints on the knife in his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Um, whose are they? You didn't even have to ask, little missy. It's obvious. They're mad on guards. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what about this airtight testimony? It's that old security lady, Miss Oldbag. I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Um, well... I even told her not to open that mouth of hers and blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck on ten and there is no turning it down, trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Oldbag saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. On Guard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. No way! Bum, 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 bum. We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. Scandal with Mr. Corda? But, but why? Well, two years ago, a woman committed suicide. Suicide? Her name was Celeste Impax. And she was Juan Corda's manager. The victim's manager? But that's not all, pal. Miss Impax was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. The mentor? A woman who was both Mr. Corda's manager and Miss Andrews' mentor. Could her suicide have something to do with this case? You wanna know more about her, pal? She was the victim's manager and also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. It's been two years since her suicide and those two are... Those two are linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence- I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. Miss Von Karma! You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. You don't... You don't mean... I do. Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You're no longer needed. Goodbye. That's... Wait, wait. Please wait, sir. If I don't get this month... Quiet. If it weren't for traitors like you... I would have won. Is that what you wanted to say? Who? That voice. Edgeworth. It's been a long time, right. This person... This is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I going to do with you? Still blaming others when things go wrong? You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. You? How dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it? You soiled the Von Karma name, dragged it through the mud. You even ran away with your tail between your legs like the ill-bred dog you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Francesca. How are things going? I hear you're having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. You? You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. 
Keep your assumptions to yourself. I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix Wright. I will see you tomorrow in court. It will be a clinical, clinical lesson in the meaning of total victory. <laughs> Still the same wild mare she always was. I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick. I... I... I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. You going to run tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? That wild mare hasn't, hasn't given in yet, it seems. So, no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own in the trial tomorrow. What's that supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And working together is the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. And the truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you ever feel the need for my assistance, it's available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, but I can be a bit more generous with information. Just what's going on inside his head? A lot of things may have happened, however Manfred von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record as proof of a von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you'd lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It's been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. I see. Then let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Well, with Francisca, she almost always says, I will defeat you this time, the instant she sees me. But the courtroom's not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. To save their lives. To save your client, you say? Those who think only of their own ego-driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. Even if you're a prodigy, or someone like you, Edgeworth. Looks like there's still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn? Me? Hmm. Well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is co coming soon enough. Uh, yeah, I guess present everything. <laughs> I have no interest in talking about useless evidence. Put a little more thought into what you show me, Phoenix Wright. Still as stuck up as ever. We're looking into leads, but we can only look into a few key players with our limited resources. There's no reason for us to waste our energy investigating this person. Why don't you just tell it to me straight and say I don't have any info? There's an interesting rumor about this man. You mean the one about Miss Andrews getting close to him? But that's pretty common tabloid fare, isn't it? I don't take things at face value when there's more to be found. While I was abroad, these deplorable types of actors became popular, I take it. Well, refreshing like a spring breeze is the motto. R refreshing? And what is so refreshing about a spring breeze? Sounds like the pollen's not treating him well this year. Adrian Andrews. She holds a large secret within herself. A secret? 
You can't help but feel like this whole case revolves around her. Hmm. This woman's another key to solving this case. Do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago. But she was suddenly called away by a different show and became Warren Corridor's manager. And then, a few months later, Celeste and Pax died. But her death was ruled a suicide, right? Yes. But there's still one riddle we've yet to solve. A riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished, huh? Miss Impax's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there's no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. I mean, what if she just didn't write one? The suicide note? But how do you know- Thank you. There was no solid evidence, however, we did find traces of ink on her right index finger which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Warren Corridor himself. The victim? He was the one who found her body, which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. I like how, like how even here he's got that, uh, he's, he's got that thing in his mouth, that weed or piece of grass or whatever. Mr. Corda hid his own manager's suicide note? But why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think we should look this over. This is the suicide report. Part one, anyway. Part one? Ah, oh, the lawyer dude. So what did you find out? Um, well, I'm still in the middle of investigating. I see. But I've already told you everything I know, dude. What do you think about this article? Hm. <laughs> We're talking about a thing with Juan. I always thought she was a bit careless in the way she handled it. And that's it? That's it. I mean, yeah, that's it. That's my manager. Did you meet her? Uh, yeah. What do you think? Strong woman, right? She takes good care of me. You're such a mama's boy. Um, what's wrong? How much do you know? What do you mean, how much? Mr. Lawyer, I may be your client, but... I hope you'll keep yourself out of my personal life. Ah, no, I would never... Now, uh, if you'll excuse me, I have a lunch appointment I have to keep. You're in detention. Who in the world are you gonna eat with? The security guard? Mr. Nick? The Celeste Impax lady. Somehow I get the feeling she's a very important person in all this. I don't have anything to say to delinquents like you. Mm, she's clamming up like the old clam she is. Please, anything will be helpful. Well then, how about I tell you my measurements? Um, no, that's okay, really. 